Hello everyone and welcome! In this video I'm going to be explaining the W16 engine, one of the craziest engines that's made it into production in the Bugatti Veyron. Now the W16 is basically two VR8s matched together to a common crankshaft. So if you haven't yet watched my video on a VR6, which a VR8 is basically a VR6 with two cylinders added on, I would highly suggest checking that video out first before watching this. It'll make it make a lot more sense. So let's take a look at the engine and talk about how it works. And basically I'm just going to start with the air intake. Now this engine has four turbochargers. So we're going to start with this one in the top left. And basically what we're looking at is a top down view on the engine. So we've got one cylinder bank right here with eight cylinders, one cylinder bank right here with eight cylinders. And I've got different little cross sections going on, which I'll explain. So we have our intake air going into the intake side of our turbocharger. That's on both the left and right side of the engine where you've got these two turbochargers on each side. So it'll pull in that intake air, which will come back, and that'll be fed through this intercooler. Now this is an air-to-water intercooler, so these two uh, air-to-water intercoolers here will have another radiator basically located somewhere else on the car, which is cooling down that liquid, which then cools down the air as it travels through. So the air passes through the intercooler, comes into the intake manifold, which splits the air into these eight channels for this VR8 on this side and the VR8 on this side. So you've got the two turbochargers basically working uh, for each independent side, which are all connected to a common crank. Okay, so now your air is going to be moving into the engine and you're going to have multi-point fuel injection. So for each of these eight ones, you're going to have a fuel injector which will be spraying in the fuel to mix with the air. And basically what this looks like in the block is there's going to be eight openings along the side of this block where air can move in. And each one of these cylinders has two intake valves and two exhaust valves. So the air-fuel mixture comes in as you can see here. And so this VR8 staggered, but all eight intakes come in on the left side and all the exhausts exit on the right side. So all that air comes in, moves into the cylinder, then you have your combustion occur, and then the exhaust, all of the exhaust moves out the right side of it. So here we have, for these four cylinders, you have the air coming in, and then it leaves through this one exhaust manifold, which is just for these four cylinders right here, and then it goes into this individual turbocharger, spools this up, and pulls in air, and you have the process repeat. Now, the valve train for this looks very similar to a VR6, so if you haven't yet watched that video, that's a great way to figure out how that valve train works. But basically, on the left side, you're going to have a camshaft, and that's going to be controlling the intake valves for both sets of cylinders here, the left and the right. And then on the right, you're going to have a single exhaust camshaft, and that's going to be controlling the exhaust valves for both the left and the right. Now, for the Bugatti Veyron, the W16 is at a 90 degree V, uh, which is different from the W8 and the W12, which Volkswagen makes, and those are going to be at 72 degrees. Now, the firing order, if you are so curious, is listed here, and basically how this works, uh, I couldn't find any diagrams that explain what the numbering would be, but based on other engines from Volkswagen, what I assume it would be, it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and then the firing order as shown below. So, why would they use four turbos? Uh, basically, the reason Bugatti said they did this was because they could get better low RPM and better partial throttle power versus using two larger turbos, one for each side. So that's why they went with four turbos. So, what are the benefits of an engine this massive and what are kind of some of the drawbacks to it? Well, the good thing is, it's kind of compact for the number of cylinders it has. 16 is a ridiculous number of cylinders, but it's similar in size to a V12. Also, having 16 cylinders, you can have a very large displacement engine. This is an 8 liter engine, so you can create a tremendous amount of power. This one actually produces somewhere in the range of 1000 to 1200, depending on which model it's going in. Uh, now, this fires every 45 degrees. There's some math if you're into it. Um, and basically, this just means that it's going to have very smooth power delivery. So in like a four-cylinder engine, you're going to have a power stroke occur every 180 degrees. So they won't overlap at all. With this engine, there's going to be a lot of overlap of your power strokes, and you're going to have very smooth power delivery. So what are the drawbacks of an engine like this? Well, the first and most obvious one is cost. This is going to be an extremely expensive engine. All the number of parts, uh, the complexity, the engineering required to make it all work, it's just an incredibly expensive engine. Uh, complexity, as I mentioned, there are 64 valves in this engine and four turbochargers. I mean, it's unreal how complex it is. Weight is also an issue. This is a 400 kilogram 
uh, engine, so 880 pounds for the engine alone, which is pretty uh, excessive on the weight end. You know, it's making a lot of power, it makes a thousand horsepower, but it also is very heavy. And then restricted cylinder bore size, this just is kind of a downside of the VR uh, engine layout. And basically, you know, your, your engine cylinders can only be so large where you have to increase the overall size of the engine. And you don't want to do that because you just keep adding weight. So typically you're kind of restricted on your bore size and you kind of got to work with the stroke a little bit more than you usually would. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.